Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicholas Kalos. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of getting your private pilot's license while you're in the military rather than getting it when you've gotten out and you're a veteran. So the reason why this is like really important uh, is because a lot of people have been talking about how they plan to get out um, and they want to know about this and what it's going to, it's going to entail. So let's talk about this. Um, so I'm going to start this with the cons. And the cons uh, pretty much are reflected to the pros. And if I look down, it's just because I'm reading these new notes. So the cons um, about doing your private pilot's license as a veteran, the first one is you are a veteran. Um, sorry if I checked that. So the con is con number one is you are a veteran. And that means you're going to have a lot of things changing in your life. So it's it's different. Your life is going to be completely different from now on. You're a veteran. You're no longer in the military, and that's just the first one. That's just the, that kind of these would fall under what that entails. So con number two is you're going to get out, and re whether you are in like already have claims, or you're retiring, or um, you're getting out and you don't have any disability claims you're going to have to get a new job. And even if you have the disability, you're still going to need to get a job to pay for the private pilot's license. Unless you live somewhere where you're paying like close to nothing, or you own a house that you're living in, or you've been very good with your money and you've saved up. Because this is going to cost you $10,000. So the new job means during the day, you're going to have to um, be at work, and you're going to have to find times to fly. So it's a pain in the ass, honestly. And you got to throw that $10,000 on top of your new, um, uh, um, like the new living situation you have. So let's take into account you were in the military, you had your barracks paid for, your car payment, and uh, all your health insurance was good. Now you're out, and you have... I don't know, say your rent is $900, your insurance is $200, you know, that's a whole other $900 of rent that you didn't have to pay because you had the barracks or you had BAH paying for your house. So now you have that to think about. Uh, the next con has got to do with banks. When you get out of the military, um, one of the interesting things is even you had this secure income when you were in the military. You knew the 1st and the 15th that you were going to get paid. The other people I knew is the bank. But now you're out and you say you get a job uh, working for USAA or get a job working, you know, for Subway or, you know, whatever you do, you do. A lot of banks are going to want to see that you have at least two years of solid income from that company before they're going to loan you out um, an amount substantial, uh, any uh, any substantial amount like ten thousand um, dollars. So that's a big con, you know. And even if you have money to put forward to it, all that kind of stuff, it, it's still they're going to be more reluctant to it, and they may might make the interest rate higher, or you know, make your payments higher. Whatever they whatever their case is, that's that's something you're going to be facing. Uh, number four is going to be the new stresses of life that you're going to be having. As I was saying, when you get out, you're going to have a new job, new uh, rent to pay. You might start feeling the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. If you, you know, that's what it is, post-traumatic. So say you get out and you start to get these symptoms. You start to go through new stresses of life. Things might send you a little differently. Not to say the military isn't stressful, but that's been your normal for quite a while. So you get out and you have new stresses. Still, that's just a con. And it's, it's going to be an inevitable con, but it's still a con to have, to, to, to look at. Um, number five is you're going to have more work and less time. The reason why I say you have more work, less time is because... 
on top of all your bills, you're gonna have to pay uh, the ten thousand dollars. And even if you only if you get a loan somehow and you pay that loan back, you're still having to pay more than what you were doing in the military. So you're gonna have to work more. You're gonna have to do Uber. You're gonna have to do um, you know, if you get the GI Bill right away and they pay, they offset you with that BAH, you're still going to have to pay for other things. Uh, and that can be hard, you know, because then you have to go to college full time or part time. You have to finish your assignments and then you have to work and then you have to, you know, fly the actual airplane and then you got to pay for that, that loan. So it's, it's quite a bit. Um, and you can be smart about it and get it done correctly, but it's just something to think about, guys if, and gals. If you're in the military and you want to pursue this type of career, I suggest getting your license while in. And here's why. <laughs> so um, I'm going to read, like, number one is uh, when you get out. So pro number one, if you now we're getting out of the military and we already have our, our private license, the moment you start the, you know, your GI Bill and you start, sign up to college, all that kind of stuff, because you have that license, they're going to start paying for your next license that you need for your, for your uh, pilot, like your next pilot license, because there are multitudes that you have to get, your commercial, all that kind of stuff, your instructors. So they're going to start paying for that because they start paying after you got your private license. So now they're paying for your college and for your flight school. That means less stress on you. Pro number two of finishing your private pilot's license while you're still in the military is gonna be that you have less time when you get out to actually have to be in school. So let me just make sure you understand that. When you get out, you'll probably have uh, a year, maybe two, maybe a year and a half instead of like you know, the longer time it takes, you'll probably save up about three or four months on um, getting hired to become a pilot. And that's that's the goal here is you want to become a commercial airline pilot. So the faster you can do that once you get out of the military, the better you're going to feel, you know, both, uh, you know, monetarily and happy wise. Because like, let's look at it. You get out of the military and you're in college. You're learning how to fly, and but you're getting paid very little, you know, because you're getting the BAH, you're having to work, all that kind of stuff. The faster you can have your ass in the seat or in the cockpit, and you're you know making that wage, um, the faster you're gonna a be traveling, b have a solid income with more benefits that are like what you had in the military, and that includes like how they handle your spouse. Uh, it's very much like the military. And then uh, the last thing is, and this is more of a matter of pride, you're not going to be working at you know some no-end job. You're actually going to be working towards your, your career goals. So that's a reason. Uh, while you're, the, the, the other thing is like, since you're going to be in the military still, this is pro number three, while you're still going to be in the military. So banks will be able to go, hey, he has a solid, you know, a solid income. They'll be more inclined to, you know, lend to you rather than when you get out. So use that to an advantage. Plus the fact that um, there are definitely military banks that you could go to to get even more, uh, low, like lower interest rates, things like that. So that's, you want to do that while you're in. Uh, it, it just helps. I have a few friends that have done it and, um, they're 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 fine you know they're, they're great so that's that's interesting you know they i think my friend just completed his private pilot's license and at that same notion because his loan was so good he's pretty much done paying it off you know at, at completion so that was easy and it was really easy for him to get it he didn't have to have any hassle or high interest rates or bs that you know is going to probably come to you when you become a civilian um, number four is pretty much uh, dual to the con of number four. It's your stresses are going to be normal, and 
by no means am I saying the military has normal stresses. You know, you got 24-hour duty, gate guard, CQ, uh, you know, PT, all that kind of stuff, and just your normal work day is a lot more rigorous than most. But you're used to it. And that means adding something a little bit to the known is going to be easier than adding it to the unknown, which is being a veteran. So this will be a lot easier. Um, five, and this this is you know my opinion, and it can it can be uh, anybody could have a different opinion. But your chain of command is going to respect the fact that you're a in college, b you know doing these extracurricular like extra um things in your uh in your military time so they're more likely to i don't know i'm not saying they'll give you an award or anything like that but they'll give you more lenience at least with it they'll they'll be more understanding like if you say you know you got work call at 0900 and or 09 and uh at 11 30 you know you have to go to lunch but you also might have a flight that you need to take. They're more likely to understand like, hey, this is for his career. This is what he wants to do. You know, we might call top, hey, this soldier or this, you know, airman, whatever branch you are, needs to uh, attend this class for college. Is that okay with you? And you might get um, time to go. And the best part about that is you're still getting paid by the military. So... You know, you won't be able to do that in the civilian world. Be like, hey, uh, boss, I don't want to show up to work because I, or I don't feel, I, I can't show up to work because I got to go to class. They're going to be like, yeah, get out of here. Yeah, you can schedule your time around, but do you really want to be working all night and then fly in the day and then college? Like, you're, you're never going to sleep, so. Uh, those are my pros and cons of getting your license before you get out. Uh, if you have any more questions about other things that could relate to the same topic as you have before, please comment and I will answer them my best. Um, I enjoy bringing these videos to you guys, so yeah, thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe. We've been, we're about to pass 500 subscribers, which is really cool. I'm trying to get this channel monetized um, and uh, all the support you guys give uh, really helps. So thank you so much and... Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.